secrets, are you? No, sir. Let Neptune strike ye dead, Winslow! Hi everyone, I'm Joel Mears, I'm the editor-in-chief of Rotten Tomatoes, and today I'm here with the director of The Lighthouse, Robert Eggers, Hi. and uh, one half of the madness at its center, Robert Pattinson. Welcome, guys. Hello, thank you. So, first question I'm going to throw to an audience review that came in for your film over the weekend. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> from a guy named uh, Alex, I won't give you his last name, but he said, I don't understand what the fuck is happening here. <laughs> And I'm just wondering if you can you can Don't help. Ask. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a great <laughs> score. Actually, the audience score is really high. But yeah. can you help Alex's uh, Alex out? What what is happening here in the lighthouse? Um, I mean, I think that that's a fair question <laughs> to ask. I think that uh, even people who enjoy the movie, I hope that they are kind of <laughs> exiting the theater asking that very same question. Uh, but uh, you, you know, you don't. I mean, it's just it's just two guys going crazy in a lighthouse. I think the audience ends up in the same place that both the characters end up in <laughs> by the end of it. You just kind of, just everyone gets caught in the same riptide. I mean, think about how, uh, like, twisted his character becomes trying to discover and understand what's going on in the movie. Mm. So mm -hmm. it's only fair. <laughs> and you're adding foghorns and things to drive us insane the entire time. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, do you remember the first time you read the script? Because I know you wanted something weird. Mm. Did it satisfy that itch? Yeah, I mean, I didn't necessarily know if I wanted something weird as such. I mean, I just kind of, uh, I talked to her about a couple of other things. I'm, I'm always very um, trepidatious, is that the right word? Um, about um, playing uh, English people in period dramas, because I think when you are starting out acting in England, you're basically, that's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, and it seems like if you do one, then like, you're kind of locked in for a while. Yeah. And uh, so I was always, and that's kind of why I went to America like, pretty early on. I wanted to play Americans and I wanted to, um, I mean, I do feel very English, but like I kind of didn't necessarily want everyone to immediately identify me as English. Um, but then with this, um, I remember reading it and said, this doesn't really count as a period drama at all. It doesn't count as a period piece. Like, it is a period piece, but it's like, it just seemed like it was using the period elements to make it seem alien rather than to make it seem familiar. I feel like most period things, they have to kind of check a lot of boxes, first of all, and it kind of puts me off. But this is feel the kind of colloquialism of it and the kind of specificity, it made it just feel very unique more than anything. More than, it, it's pretty genreless. Yeah, I want to talk about the genre in a second. Why was Robert the, pers the person to play you from? Who, 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 who else could possibly do it? I mean, I think uh, Rob carries a lot of mystery with him. Uh, I, I don't know if it's, you know, the way your eyes are set. <laughs> <laughs> but but no he, he and and uh, and like you know when Rob was saying that he turned down a role that I offered him that he's so smart about the roles that he chooses and he's looking to work with uh, auteurs and wannabe auteurs like myself and and take on um, challenging work I mean we, you know I think you did use the word weird but I think mm -hmm. but but you also said that it wasn't challenging. And, and that is what makes Rob such a great, brave actor, is that he's, he's looking for, for challenges all the time. So, uh, you know, whenever you see a film that he's in, it's, it's quite uh, staggering because, because it's always different from the last one, and, and he is taking these, these big risks. Uh, I, I just mentioned to him, again, that, that I rewatched Lost City of Z, and there's a moment when he just sees a dead fish and says extraordinary four times. And I thought, fuck, that performance is extraordinary, yeah. you know? And it, I mean, that's an incredible performance in this film. Watched yesterday, the buzz coming out of the theater second time mm -hmm. was, Rob, you just knocked out of the park. Oh, but you're, you're matched sort of in intensity by Willem. And I'm wondering, what was it like working with Willem in such closed quarters when uh, the script of the sort of demand of this kind of madness? Um, I mean, Willem, I think everybody loves Willem. I, mean, I think it's kind of impossible not to. Um, but he's kind of, I, I mean, there's a couple of different things. When you read the script the first time, his part, could be so dark, like so kind of 
venal and that there's definitely mm-hmm. a world where it could be just horrifying mm-hmm. um and there's just something so mischievous about william like just no matter no matter who like i love like his performance in um uh oh god what is it called the, the uh, nick cage laura dern movie um well the heart well the heart like playing the worst person in the world and also and has that kind of intensity and terrifying uh, focus I and mean, then he has that ability to just switch so fast on a dime to make to make it like an inc- like he can make something a joke immediately. You never quite know where you stand, and he's very very good at doing that. But like, and also it's funny because well, I was doing we uh, <laughs> we were with this rehearsal stuff, and and I could see I was kind of gonna okay I see kind of what Willem's doing. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold back. I'm gonna when I've got my big moments, I'm gonna try and shock him, and I. Like, just Willem, whenever, whatever you throw at Willem, he so immediately can absorb what you're doing and then just completely recalibrate his entire performance on the dime again and suddenly just be like, and then to consume you, he can just make himself so huge afterwards. And like, no matter, what, like if you start screaming and shouting, attacking him, he just, he just, he just can, he can eat you and then, and then throw you up back into your own face. <laughs> you had a lot of fun. Though. Yeah, that reminds me of the, the the night of you guys just getting, I guess, blackout, drunk, crazy in the film. I should say, was that fun to direct and to watch happening as it was shot? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's incredibly fun to work with just with these two uh, uh, actors who. Uh, are up for anything, mm-hmm. game for anything. Like, the, you know, they, they signed up to this knowing that they were going to be, like, uh, punished. Uh, well, yeah, we, uh, you know, we, we uh, th- there's been talk about Rob wanting to punch me in the face. Um, didn't really. Uh, what's that? <laughs> didn't really. It's okay if you did. But I, I didn't. <laughs> but, but, like, but, uh, you know, we were shooting a scene. It's raining. Yeah. The rain's not reading in his close-up. So we have to get the fire hose so that we can see the, the rain in, in the mm. close-up. But because as, you know, when it you get... puts the fire toes on his face. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and that's making it harder for Rob to do the action, so we have mm. to do take after take after take. Mm. Uh, but, I, you know, and, and if you did want to punch me, that's understandable. And I didn't want you, you know, we did use the final take, just, you know, <laughs> so that you know. But, but Rob, if we needed three more, he would have done it. Yeah. And he would have done it harder than he did it the last three, because that's the kind of actor he is. And so that night where you're blackout and you're you're dancing and you're into the blackout. <laughs> I'm gonna go straight there. Uh, you're you're hugging. You're you know it's all, all the stages of a massive night out that ends up with you being <laughs> hungover. But what did you do to prepare to get in that frame of mind? Were you, were you drunk? Were you? What was the situation there? No. Um, well. We shot that in sequence, I think. Pretty the, much, yeah. Yeah, and so it's kind of rare for this movie. <laughs> yeah, and so it's kind of. From the dancing thing, I mean, it was like a lot of ex- energy expenditure, but it's kind of, I don't know, something, it's just a lot of the script, no matter how, like, even the kind of abstract nature of a lot of it, it all, I, I always just felt very cohesive to me and I kind of knew where it was coming from. Even if I wouldn't be able to define explicitly, like, exactly what it was, you could really feel the tone just in the writing. And then, uh, and then I think we'd, we'd shot quite a lot by that. Point. And so I kind of got where how you'd be feeling. And also the song that Willem's singing is a very mm. beautiful song that's kind of... Uh, but so much of the stuff, I mean, it's, it's kind of... You, you never really get a part where it has these kind of... These 180 turns all the time, like the kind of... From that uh, dancing scene to the fighting afterwards, I mean, it's kind of... It was so specifically written in the script, and even to the stance, which uh, they were going to be boxing each other. I and mean, then even when we were shooting it afterwards, I remember we were doing the fight. We did one take where the fight was just sort of, kind of just fighting. And we were like, I was like, just needs needs something else. And this guy was like, needs to be strange, it needs to be stranger. And we did it immediately, and it kind of shows <laughs> me and William. Immediately, take two, both just grabbing each other's dicks. No, that that was that, that was that I, I said there's no improv in this movie, but I suppose that was uh, that was both our instincts. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, nowhere to take it. 
But you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, and they were really punching each other. It's all the Willem, Willem, Willem. I swear to this day, was just putting his middle finger like this, <laughs> <laughs> just right in my ribs, and I was oh, like, God. Jesus, no padding. <laughs> so you had some other co-stars in this movie, uh, sort of following on from Black Phillip. You went to Seagulls. Yeah. How was that like to direct Animals again? And what was it like working with the seagulls? The the, the goat, you can't train a goat. So uh, <laughs> don't ever make a movie with a goat in a major role. I, I, film students, don't do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but the seagulls were incredibly well trained. Uh, mm. they, they came from the UK, like Rob, uh, <laughs> uh, classically trained British actors hiding there, <gasps> doing main accents. <laughs> uh, and uh, But they... Um, their names were Lady Tramp and Johnny, and mm-hmm. they were they were fantastic. I I don't think I ever ever had any interaction with the seagull. Like oh, I just yeah, that's no. editing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had a one interaction with the with the rubber chicken. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, when people have to watch that scene because it's, it's pretty great yeah. too. Yeah, Robert Eggers. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to call you Eggers and Pants, but Eggers, you're part of a sort of new wave of well, horror filmmakers, at least for your first film, who came out the gates with these incredible, you know, I'm thinking Jennifer Kent, Ari Aster. And I feel like you guys went away and chatted and said, for our second films in 2019, we're just going to screw you up. And we're not going to give you anything that looks like a genre film. And I wonder, what what genre is this movie? And I, I guess the question is, what, what are you guys doing with sort of stretching the elasticity of, of genre at the moment? Yeah, I mean, first of all, that that meeting of the three of us did happen, uh, <laughs> okay. and and it was and it, and and I don't know how you found out about it mm-hmm. because you know Jennifer told me. Okay, of course. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, I look. I don't know. Uh, mm. I I I, I uh, bow down and pray to the altar of genre every day because it was able to get this movie and the other movie made. Uh, you know, what genre is it? I really couldn't tell you. Like, um, I, uh, I think that a lot of ways it's, it's, it's like the, in many ways, it's like the literary genre of a weird tale, like the work of Blackwood, M.R. James, Mm -hmm. Arthur Mackin. Uh, but because of, uh, a lot of the sort of theatrical traditions that it draws from, that doesn't quite fit either. Um, but, uh, I've had journalists and, uh, and other people, who get my intentions and our intentions who said that they see it as a horror movie and they actually think it's scary. I don't think it's scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I hope it's like, it's slightly dreadful at least. Uh, but, uh, though I don't, but I don't mind if it scares yeah. people, you know, and, and really like we need, uh, people can call it whatever they want and we need to have these labels so that we can talk about things. Uh, the only thing that bothers me is when my, my, my fellow nerd brethren get, feel like you need to have an exact list with exact boxes checked to call something something. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, does, it doesn't matter when the iron, late Iron Age ended and the early Middle Ages began. They'd been academia, they do have the same kind of like, uh, uh, arguments, but it, we're all just trying to find words and ways to talk about stories that we like. So we should yeah. just, it should be fine. Robert Pattinson, how do you describe it if I was to ask you? Do you find it scary? Do you find it? I mean, uh, I've or You're probably just going to be like, what are you talking about? You're wrong. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Here, take the no, I mean, because it's kind of, there's lots of like grotesque stuff in it, but it doesn't really, f- I, I don't think it's scary as such, but it's kind of, what appealed to me the most in the script was, that sort of humor where you don't, I mean, I remember the first time I read it and I, was, I wasn't entirely sure if how much of you even knew it was funny or which bits, because right, I was right. like, I didn't really know what it was supposed to be. And like, uh, but it kind of reminded me of like kind of Bunuel stuff, like sure. kind of in Shan Andalou, like the kind of when you, mm. it's sort of, there are it's sudden images of which are just really, like really frightening all of a sudden, but it's not, it's not kind of, really concertedly trying to build tension to have a specific release yeah. that you're mm-hmm. kind of it's sort of the tension is built up and then you're just part of the tension <laughs> afterwards like it's kind of um, it's, it's a tense we we'll just call it yeah. a tense genre a tense <laughs> but it's kind of a, it's a bit, and also like a kind of dark 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 comedy like yes. I mean it's kind of like sort of surreal comedy it is, it is it is hilarious mm. um, just before we wrap you've, your next film The Northman do we know what genre that's going to be 
Um, oh, musical. <laughs> musical. <laughs> Very excited. Yeah. Okay. Um, Anything you can tell us about it? Uh, it's uh, a revenge drama. Whatever you know. Very exciting. We'll have this chat in two years and see how we describe it then. I mean, um, I don't even you know until it's that was leaked, not announced. So oh. I don't even know if it's. I don't even know if I'm going to make it. Unofficial. Okay. I, ho- I hope. I hope I do. <laughs> All right. Great. Uh, and Robert, your next film. Tell us anything about that. Are you excited to take on the bat suit? Uh, yeah, very, very. Thanks. Awesome. It's not. It's too. F- still far enough away to not be nervous. This is still a fun part for me. Great. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. The lighthouse is in theaters now. It'll be expanding. Check online to see if it's coming to you guys. Uh, coming close to you. Thanks again, guys. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Cheers.